Welcome back to the channel. Last time that we were on the Mercedes, you saw us fit the AMG body kit. But before it goes back to the paint shop, we're gonna build a full exhaust. So we're gonna throw this guy back in here because we're gonna start doing our headers before the car goes back to the body shop. That way we could have all the fabrication done and we're not working around nice new paint in here. when We're building out all of our piping. So first step, we're gonna get this on the picker drop it in and we should be much easier. Our look, our studs from our new motor mounts should drop through here. We could attach it, raise it up, throw the trans on, and then we'll also put in our steering rack, which have our mounting already built in as well. So everything should just be bolt in, no fab for this. And then once everything's in, we could start playing around with our, the header. We got our motor, transmission, and steering rack back in the Mercedes. Next, we're gonna start working on our tubular headers. See, I started to mount our flange, exhaust flange, the side block with this hardware. I'm gonna finish mounting this side. Uh, we're gonna start on the passenger side. We're waiting on a couple of things. We gotta make our steering connection first before we can decide where this one's gonna sit. We got a bunch of cuts of stainless tubing. This transition will probably come off of, right off of our exhaust flange, and then we can use a longer elbow like this, which will cut back and cut in angles to make our transition down to our conical piece. And our conical piece then will size up to our tubular header. got our piece all coped around here and then if we slip it in and bring it to our conical piece we have a nice tight fitment going on. Now what I'm going to do is trace a line around the back side and be able to cut this off and have it flush with our manifold piece and then I'll be able to do a few tacks here and this piece will be all set. Before tacking on this side I'm going to have to cut open the hole, uh, trace around here and make our opening match up with our piece of pipe. Okay, we've got our third cylinder all coped up now. You can see there's a nice tight fit, good for welding. So I will begin to design our third scoop down here. This one, we couldn't really come out and back over again um, because the relative distance between here and here is so small. As the tube goes downward, this distance becomes greater. So we were able to arc out and then still have our access to our spark plug. So third one, we're gonna kind of do something pretty similar to this. Make a nice swoop, let's get some material and see how it's going to work out. And we got all of my pipes coped. Um, as you can see, I have a nice tight fit around here, around here, and around here. I just need to chop off this last one, that way we could get it inside of our flange. And then I can start tracing these and start cutting out holes that are made up around each of these runners as they enter the tube.
Okay, so I got my manifold all cleaned up, all my holes drilled, to accept our runners, and I have it bolted down to this quarter inch piece of C-channel. What that does is keep our manifold completely flat as we're tacking this together. I'm gonna tack it, test fit it in the car, bring it back here, and then if everything's good, then I'll bolt it down again and weld it. That way, this piece doesn't warp from all the welding heat, and that way we ensure that when we go to bolt it on the motor, it's completely flat, and it'll make a perfect exhaust seal. Tacked all my runners to the manifold, and now we have it back onto the motor. To me, it looks awesome. There's plenty of clearance right here. It comes out in a really good spot uh, past the starter that we can transition down to this big open space. And of course, we can access, I can't really get it loose where it is now, but because it's ah, all these spark plugs, you can get into each of them with the manifold in place, so it makes the car a bit more serviceable, which is always nice. Right, Andrew? Oh, of course. So yeah, I think it, it looks pretty cool. It fits really nice. So the only thing left is glue it. Yeah. Glue it all down. Bring it back to the table, mount it back up to our flat plate, and we can keep this nice and straight as the heat's going into it, and let it cool down while it's still bolted to the plate. And then uh, when we bring it back here, it'll uh, bolt right up. Okay, so everything's final welded, and then I just bolted up the whole manifold back in just to make sure everything's good, and I think it looks pretty good. Obviously it has lots of clearance, it lands in the place that we want it to, and it's nice and flat up against the block. And also, all these spark plugs are accessible too, so you don't have to remove the manifold to change out the plugs or do the wiring or anything. So I'd say that's a pretty big success. We're gonna move on and start transitioning off the back there. We're gonna to wanna to start to curve down right where our three inch pipe ends, so that way we could dive down next to our transmission. And we'll probably be putting a V-band as well. So I'm gonna see if we have some curved pieces of tubing and make the transition, weld the V-band, and then we can finish the rest of the exhaust on this side. All right, so we got the car up, and I'm just sort of planning out the exhaust. I'm going to come off of here with a 45, attach to this pipe, then put our V-band right at the end, and then we'll be able to connect that to another piece, either pie cuts or another 45 that comes down into this area. And then right around here, we're going to be mounting this resonator. So we'll get inlet and outlet there. Then after it leaves, we'll come to the center here, make an X-pipe, and then transition back to each side out of there. The exhaust could run down the side, probably come back in, hug this area really tight so it's not in the way of the drive shaft or the move of the control arm, dive under our fixed point here off of our diff, and then come back over here and then we'll be doing a muffler on either side here and over here. So that's the basic plan. we we'll start building it one step at a time. I'm gonna get that 45 taped up and then I'll tack it on, tack on the V-band, bring the whole assembly down, weld it, and then put it back up. And then I'll have a basis to do our mating V-band and our connection to our resonator. Okay, I've got my pie cuts and the straight piece all taped together. And then I have my V-band over here. So this goes on the top. So it'll made up to our transition piece coming off of our manifold up top. And it'll keep our resonator in a nice parallel position to the body of the car, giving it clearance up top. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this piece to the bench, just do some quick tacks on all of this. 
I'll leave this part loose. It does have some play up and down, left and right, as it slides into the resonator. And that way, I could tack my V-band up here, put everything together, and then hold this in the position where it's gonna be and tack it while it's actually on the car. Okay, we got the manifold mounted back up. We got our V-band clamp and our transition piece down to our resonator over here. Everything is looking really nice. There's plenty of space, clearance on all sides, and everything's accessible to turn the V-band, get it on and off, get the manifold on and off. This is good, good first step. I think next we're gonna move on to making our manifold for this side and get to pretty much the same area down here and then we could start connecting our exhaust pieces together all right we're moving on to side number two i have taken a piece of straight and tacked it to my cone and this is how we're going to be sitting side number two i got some spark plugs in here tested out and we're gonna have to be very straight here. The other side, we were kind of tilted down because we have more room, but as you can see right there, there's our steering column poking out and we do not want to run into it. So we have to be as high as possible by the end of the last cylinder on the manifold. So this is roughly where we're gonna be. Uh, you can see I have a piece already sort of mocked up in here. We're gonna to have to transition this piece pretty hard to get into the front of our cone and to get it at the height that we want and keep it level with the motor. So I got a couple little piece 45s here that are gonna work for that transition that I have in here right now is a little bit too long. So I'm gonna have to hold up the other pieces to it and I've guesstimate how much of the straight to cut back, you know, be conservative and then, you know, little by little I'll cut it off so that way this piece will be in the exact spot that we want it without a ton of welds going on. So, let's see, we got these two pieces. They're gonna make our swoop down and then come back to straight. So, I'm gonna put the camera down, get both of my hands, orient these where I want them, put some marks on this piece, cut back and then test fit everything and then kinda cut back as I need to make everything perfect. Okay, so I got my first piece there all tacked together and tacked to the manifold. Here's my conical piece. You slip that in, line this up right here. We get it running nice and parallel. We still have room. Get our little socket wrench in and out for now. We'll have to see what this, what this does too. And then plenty of room over here to get our wrench in and out. So that's good. And we are also as high as we can be because the higher we are, the more clearance we have over here with our steering column. We can't really go any lower because when we hit the steering column, if we go any higher, then we block the spark plug. And if we go any more out, we'll hit the frame. So this is kind of the only position we could be in. So what I'm gonna do now is cut the nose off of our cone, be able to sink this in more all the way, and then uh, I'll hold it in position, make my mark and be able to cut off flush so that way these two pieces will be flush to each other and won't be a lip on the inside. All 
All right, I tack everything together and put it back in, and I'm running into one small issue, and that is making this spark plug socket accessible. As you can see, it runs just a little bit into the top of the tube before being able to be free, which we do not want. So what we have to do is I want, want to clock this down just a hair. But right now it's kind of like coming at an upward angle. And so what I could do to do that is cut the tacks in here, twist this just the slightest amount, and then we'll bring this tail end down just a hair, enough to get this out. I think we'll still be able to start making our transition out of here. The only thing I'm seeing now is how we are going to do our runners. They're gonna be, have to be different than the other side for two reasons. One, the spark plugs face the other direction. So before we had swooping ones, obviously that would get right in the way. And secondly, because the runner has to be higher at the other one, we had room to dive down because we didn't have a steering column. So they're gonna be shorter pieces that'll probably, we're gonna try and give them a little bit of an angle to get the flow going but they can't be at a severe angle like the other side. So let's pull this off, cut these tacks, clock the hair down, put it back on, test fit it, make sure this works, make sure we got enough space to make a transition out. It doesn't hit the steering column coming out here, and then we'll be all good to keep going. Okay, so I got all my pieces cut and laid through my manifold onto our tube here. So I just wanted to mock it up one more time before I start tacking everything in just to make sure we still have all of our clearances and everything is gonna line up correctly. We come out at a pretty good spot. We need a couple more parts, but we got part of our column in here. So we'll be able to see how to transition up and out of this spot. So my next step, I'm gonna pull this off, put it on the bench, tack all of these into place. I might mock it up one more time just to be sure once it's tacked, but nothing is, is pulling right now. So this is like the natural position each of these falls. So we should be a-okay on that front. Once they're all tacked together, then I could bolt it to my heavy piece on my bench and be able to keep our flange straight while we're doing all of our final welding. All right, we got both of the manifolds installed and we're ready to move on to the rest of the exhaust, but you're gonna have to wait until next time. So like, subscribe, so you can check out what we're gonna do with the rest of this exhaust system. Peace.